What's going on, people? Welcome to Throwdown, episode 214. I'm your host, Tony Polanco, and I'm joined by Emilio Lopez. Sup, people? How's it going? Chris Steely. Hey, what's up, everyone? Carlos Romero. What up, what up, what up? Adam Vale. Happy holidays. And the man with the craziest tattoo stories, Brett Murdoch. Below the belt costs double. <laughs> that is, <laughs> oh my God. That's a lesson for life, man. Double. All right, people. <laughs> yeah, so we're here, and this is our final episode of the main throwdown show. So like we do before, uh, we're going to go over the biggest things, biggest games, the shittiest games, all that of 2018. So let's not waste any time, man. Um, I asked all you guys to you know, have a story ready that you think was like a big thing or something important that happened in 2018. So I'm going to pick at random. Chris, what do you feel was the biggest story of the year for gaming? Ah, uh, shit. I mean, it's it's probably between uh, getting the FCC to investigate loot boxes because EA was too fucking greedy for their own good and brought uh, the government down. And they're still. This is still open, by the way. So you got Finland, Belgium, I think Australia, the state of Hawaii declared loot boxes gambling. China. So this this went worldwide. And then now the F the FCC is uh, not the FCC. Excuse me, the FTC, the Federal Trade Commission, is yeah. investigating loot boxes. I think that's the biggest thing of the year because the last thing we want, like gamers, the industry, whatever, is the government regulating video games like we do not want video games put behind a fucking uh metal door at like a liquor store you know like that we don't want gamestop for well fuck gamestop but we don't want that video games to end up like that right and some bullshit so uh, and ea knew what they were doing they were warned other countries started in integrating this and they said fuck it we're just gonna do it anyway and now this this is where we're at I think it's huge because it could have big repercussions going next year, man. I don't want that shit. I don't want that. Not and, and it's not like just loot boxes. They're not just gonna go. Oh, you know, this is gambling. No, they're gonna go. Hey, maybe we need to treat this like we treat Las Vegas mm-hmm. and put like mm. rules down on video games. That could be, that could be some shit. So I think that that's that's hugely important. And I'm really pissed off that EA just sits there and they keep they keep cracking up shit and they keep figuring out ways how to fucking nickel and dime us, putting mobile shit into in, into full games and all this shit. And meanwhile, they brought this down on us. So yeah, I think that was very important this year. And I'm I I think they need to go. I don't want AAA to collapse, but if EA collapses by themselves, that's fine. Break that break that fucking shit up. Yeah, I, I find it interesting how we've been trying to keep the government away from video games for like almost 30 years, you know, like we, it, we this is a fight we've been fighting for a long time. And um, even up to recently, within the last 15 years, you know, we had to keep going to Supreme Court, all this other shit, you know, but I find it funny that what took the government to really intervene was fucking EA. <laughs> if you really think about it, you know, like the greediness of these companies, like really, um, you know, opened up people's eyes. And like we talked about before microtransactions, loot boxes, all this other stuff, it's been in mobile games forever, right? But now that they put it in Star Wars, that's what really set everything off. You know, now we got the government breathing down on games. And you're right, what if you have to, you know, go behind the curtain, you know, to get a game at a store, you know? It's crazy. And and not a lot of people are talking about it, which is really, really sad, you know? I feel that that news came down during, like, a a big gaming cycle. Like, even we didn't talk about it as much as we should have because there was all this other shit going on. So, I don't know, man. Uh, Gamers really need to wake the hell up because this is... uh, Well, you saw that thing I posted last week where they brought it in front of uh, Congress. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. As an yeah. issue. I mean, it's, that was huge, and they agreed, this yeah, is, we're going to investigate. This is so. not something we can course correct anymore. Yeah. Like, other things we have in our hands, like Capcom putting ads in Street Fighter V, you know, fuck that shit. Okay, no, people are not going to buy Street Fighter V now, or and other people who have it are going to turn it off and be like, fuck the battle points and complain, and maybe they'll pull that shit out, right? That's stuff we have control over. You vote with your wallet and whatever. We don't have control over the FTC opening an investigation and deciding to put regulations on video games. That, that that now we let that go too far and ea has pushed things to a, a level now we the, you know we might uh, bear the bear the uh, repercussions of that and there's nothing we could do about it yeah man crazy i, I think next year we're really going to see something happen uh, i don't know mm-hmm. what's going to be good or bad but something's going to happen next year I, I have a feeling and it's scary man you, you don't want your government the government and shit like that you know Oh yeah. man! Eh, 
Yeah, well, we want them to regulate food and stuff like that. So yeah. it all depends on how far they go. You know, that's that's right. it. Because it shows right now the gaming industry is out of control when it comes to their loot box. They well, they have it, no way of really regulating themselves. Well, so there, there there was the ESRB was the first thing. So the Mortal Kombat trials, like yeah. Joe, Joe mm-hmm. Lieberman and all that stuff, started that shit. And they wanted to regulate video games right then and there. They're like, oh, too violent, blah, blah, blah. And so the ESRB was formed. So the industry regulates itself and they make their rules. But now they got to a point where, like, you get EA and Activision. They're like, oh, how can, how can we make more money? And the greed just pushed things to another level. So this was beyond, like, okay, ratings and all this stuff so parents know what to buy. And then they went, oh, this isn't gambling. This is loot boxes. Oh, it's gambling. Oh, the, everyone's determined it's gambling. So now you brought a whole other level of regulation down on on video games. Yeah, yeah. wasn't it the ESA? They were like, "Oh, that's not gambling at all. It's oh, optional." Yeah. Oh man, guys. Cool. I mean, <laughs> I mean, the thing is that, like, here's the here's the thing about it. Like the ESA stuff, like the ESA is re- is kind of beholden to the companies because the companies yes. pay into them. So obviously, the big the big companies have the most clout over it. Unlike something like the Comics Code Authority, which they were still paid for, you know, by the t- big companies, but they still had they still had say over as to what should be is appropriate to show and what is appropriate to not to show. I don't know. Am I the only person that doesn't actually have a problem with this part of the industry having some sort of oversight? Nope. Yeah, uh, you might. Yeah, 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 you and Adam no. are. I think it's okay. horrible, but I, I had. I, 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 Obviously, it hasn't been working. Obviously, the whole vote with our wallet thing hasn't been working. I've watched this slowly backslide. Actually, it, actually, here's the thing. That's the problem because we not everybody is voting with their wallet. No, well, people I, are not educated enough to. for it. Well, I don't you know. know. People don't care, and that's the no, problem. No, I it, think a lot of times it's they don't know, and they just accept what is there. Tony, I, rather than he rather was just talking about almost buying gold for Rockstar. That's true. I was willing. He to. knows. There's not. There's not a more educated person. It's, the it's predatory. Is, yeah, the I... problem is that it's predatory, and that if they, it like it's completely optional. But then they make it so incredibly difficult yep. that it's not really optional, and that yep. some people, the people buying into this, the big, the whales, so to speak, they don't care. And you're not going to get everybody to vote with your wallet. People have been voting with their wallets to the to the greatest extent that I think that they're going to. But the, the the big companies keep changing the playing field to make it oh seem yeah. okay, and we're slowly losing this battle. Yeah. And and because of it, like our video games, like the quality of such, they're being slowly eroded by this this weird kind of grindy microtransaction greed. Our hobby is not the better because of this. And so like it, it seems to me the same way that you you walk in and you break up a monopoly. I think that the game. Uh, industry has to a certain extent become so consolidated that yeah four or five companies can all sit down and be like you know this incredibly predatory thing it's just standard now and we all just have to take it and that's the very reason that we step in and break up monopolies is so they can't exploit the consumer and that's what i see happening here is is despite everything the co- the consumer is being exploited unless we change yep. something nothing's going to change yeah and i think people start bitches like oh they got all these microtransactions oh they got all these loot boxes all right well they're not doing anything to change the government because oh why well, the government got to get involved oh well, who do you want i mean somebody has to jump in somebody has to do something is it gonna suck it might suck it may not suck they may come up with some solution the thing but... the thing is the threat of the th- th- usually the threat of of government involvement is usually a thing that gets usually gets companies in order. <sighs> well, that's too much money involved in it, so they don't care. EA don't care. That FIFA Ultimate team is still going strong. I still see all these damn pop ups in there. And, and, and to be honest, like you know, if you think about it, them them already being called um uh you know called gambling in other countries will probably already affect them uh, affect things on our uh, on our in our country for one reason. These companies are not willing to go out and make different versions of different things. You know, for different regions, yeah, because it costs already, more already, money. Yeah, EA already told Belgium they're not going to um, adhere to their laws. But EA flat out said that. You know? they'll, they'll just block content. They'll just be like, this part of the game is blocked off. 
No, they're not gonna go through the hassle. You, if you try and walk into a casino that's in the game, they'll just be like, "You can't enter this. Contact." Well, your no, door. it'll and, and right. see the thing is that 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 stuff will affect uh, will also affect us too. Because if a good example of this is what happened in China, where that one game was edited, they edited a, bo- a bunch of uh, gambling content. You know, like you know, uh, allusions to gambling. You know, like you know, you walk into a casino, but you can't play the things. You know, they got rid of a bunch of, you know, things that would be considered like nudity or close to nudity in this one in this one one game they're releasing over there. So what's going to happen is, okay, yeah, we may if 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 they if we don't get a real decision, if we get a uh, you don't get a decision on our side, some of these companies are just going to, you know, enact these changes, uh, you know, um, you know, region wide because it's much easier to do. So but but let me ask you this then, like. To everybody who is against this kind of thing, like what about the person who is being exploited? What about the the the, the whale? Like you know that a lot of times they're displaying incredible the compulsion. They behavior. just want to get, yeah, they're very yeah. addictive. They just want to keep buying stuff. And so, everything. how does the vote with your wallet help those people? Or are we it just doesn't. Them those to... people, those people are um um for the lack of a better term, digging their own grave. You know that can't really help those people. You know, uh, but but I I do want to make something abundantly clear. I am not happy with government uh, coming in and regulating games, but I feel we may at a point where we have no choice but to let that happen. Understand? I'm I'm accepting the reality because these companies took it so far that now we have no choice but to let the government in and possibly ruin all the gaming. It's it's like you're damned if you, damned if you don't. Yeah. You know, because obviously the industry is not regulating itself. Now you need the government. So I just want to make that clear. I'm not happy about it. But I don't see an alternative to it, you know? Think about it. We're getting games that aren't even complete. They come with these huge patches, and they're constantly working on them. So, and then they still want season pass money and all that other stuff. It's like, we just gave you 60 Well, that, that's something. a little bit of a different story, season pass. No, but I'm just yeah. saying it's just overall. There, there's no regulation on any of that. There's no standard. Hey, the following services need to be. Or like what Brett was saying about uh, the whole Red Dead not being with the online at launch and the rating. Hey, there's no rule against that. They could come out half a game if they feel like it who gives a shit yeah maybe maybe the gaming industry brought it on itself because it was so unwilling to you know regulate itself like it did with the ratings it regulated itself with there but it didn't do a fucking um gambling or whatever because they were bringing in too much money so it, maybe they deserve it it's, i don't know but it's fucked you know up we're is, the ones that are gonna suffer it's, it's gonna well everything i think is gonna change because of the age system those older that older generation that just didn't know anything about video games and thinks that it's just some minor little atari thing are aging out now people that are getting into politics and up into those high positions, they're all around our age. So they know what's up already. They're, they're familiar with what's going on. So I, I think we're going to see a lot of changes. This is interesting. Uh, Kristen says that they removed gambling in Pokemon, and that was just using in-game money. Now they're trying to get rid of gambling, period, even if it's not with real money. That's crazy, man. The only other thing they can do is change the rating system and call it, you know, M for mature, not M for mature, well, the, but just for adult content. But you know why they don't do that, right? Because if it's of adult, course not. they're not yep, going to yep, be able to sell it in store. Exactly. You know? That's what I'm saying. That's they need saying. to make the distinction that gambling with fake money is called playing a game. It's mm-hmm. that's playing a game for money is called gambling. It's that is where the distinction lies. You you show me a board game where you're not like collecting and betting and essentially risking resources. Like you can't take that idea out of gaming, not just video gaming, but board gaming. So to a certain extent, a lot of that is bullshit. So I, I, I think they're going overboard on a lot of this, but I think it's just trying to find the balance because they're like, we need to be harder on gambling and video games. And people are like, all right, no more blackjack and video games. Like, no, 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 that's, it's not what we mean. We mean loot boxes. Well, loot loot boxes aren't blackjack. No, but loot boxes are. They're following the same exploitive uh, business practices. Uh, you know, they're 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 requiring money to bet on something that you do or not do not know you get. They're they're like gambling in every way. So they're they're focusing more on the blackjack than the loot boxes, and that's just honestly because. Washington is stupid. I, I have no other way to say they, it. They the just they don't stupid. know much about it. They, they don't, don't know anything it. about it. That's the thing. That's like, you have these ignorant that's people it. trying to regulate games. They don't know anything about them. But but that's what I'm saying. It's like I feel like there there are people of our age that are behind the scenes that are there. That those are the ones that are going to be responsible for it. The older ones that don't know them, like I hear, just handle this, and that's what we want. We want them to handle it. All right, man. We'll see. Um, Move on to another topic, Adam. What would you think was the 
the big thing that happened in 2008 you felt was really important? Uh, the, the super growth of uh, Battle Royale, Fortnite, coming up and just destroying um, PUBG. No one saw that shit coming. No one saw that they were going to be so dominant and worth over a billion dollars and now making even larger changes, pushing uh, cross-platform play and giving all that software away for free, which was announced today to all the developers so that way they could implement that feature in their games. That's that's groundbreaking, all of that. And that just happened me, now. Me and Tony even played that game. Yeah, we did. <laughs> yeah, you know, <laughs> it's a game this, night. Yeah. You know, this is like, all right, you know what? We're not even, they could make money selling that to all of developers, smaller developers. And they're like, no, here, take it, put it in now, spread it, spread it like a plague. You know, that way, you know, it sort of forces the hand of whoever, whatever platform is sort of against us. Like, hey, it's already in there. You don't have to do anything. You don't have to worry about it. It's there. It's the same code. You know the code. It's coming from Epic, that type of thing. That's, that's huge. And that's groundbreaking. So I got to say, the whole thing with what Epic is doing. It's just groundbreaking. This yeah. year, it's just blown my mind. Fortnite it's, it's, in it's general. Go ahead, Car- go ahead, Carlos. Oh, no, it was a bad joke. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, Fortnite in general is like the biggest game of the year. I don't think anybody could deny that. Even, um, you know, fucking, you know, Drake was involved with it. Ninja became a big superstar yeah. because of yeah. this shit. Changed oh, lives. Yeah. It changed lives. Made people rich. But here's the funny part. The <laughs> That's why <laughs> the dancing that has been made dances, yeah, made a lot of But here's the funny part. It's that this is not what's popular, but is not the actual game that launched. You know what I mean? The game, people don't even remember that. The, the game was just a, sort of like a Minecraft type game, tower defense hybrid. You know, and then next you know they're like, Yeah, that don't work. All right, we're just gonna do the PUBG stuff. And poof, it worked. And that would that's what became a hit, and now it's free to play. But I don't think any of these people playing now even bought the, the forty dollar, thirty dollar version that they had. Yeah, they probably didn't. Let's just be real. Yeah, that's what that's I'm saying. So yeah. Did you play the game? Yeah, I played it. Is it the butter game? <laughs> no, it's not. Oh, no. and I, I played it early on. I played it once they announced it when they were doing the trial for uh the actual Fortnite game because I remember years ago. Remember when that was announced? Years ago, it looked kind of cool. Build a fort. You got these people invading. You know, day and night changes, and you're building up traps and stuff. Sounded cool. Then when it finally came out, and I played. It, I'm like, yo, this looks real cheesy. I just didn't like the art style. <laughs> you know, I was like, this isn't the buddy game I was expecting. And <laughs> with the delete button, and I deleted the damn game. You know, and I think a lot of people did. And remember, it wasn't in the top tens. It wasn't. It didn't come out strong. And then all of a sudden, they say, "Hey, we're going to release a battle royale free to play." It's like, all right, whatever. And poof, it just caught on. It caught on. It was. It spread like wildfire. And slowly, we saw PUBG just disappear, just like that. You know. And yeah. remember, PUBG at the point was super strong. They had like some ridiculous millions of players, consecutive play on PC. They were announcing we're going to come to Xbox, and everyone's like, "Oh, Microsoft's going to have this big hit on their hands, exclusive." By the time that happened, no one gave a shit. To be fair, though, the game did sell three million on Xbox, like or so after it came out. So it was pretty big. Which one? What Fortnite? Itself? No, PUBG. PUBG. Oh no no yeah yeah but the, I mean compare we're comparing it not that sales I'm talking about comparing it to Fortnite yeah oh you know no I mean? forget yeah it's, it's like saying uh, you know like like right now Apple is reporting some uh, slow sales and poor sales but they still made like some ridiculous hundred billion dollars it's just based off of their estimates I want to know how much money has actually they did report it because Fortnite like yeah. you said it, the game, you you don't have to buy the game. There was microtransactions. Micro, every Ooh. day. Every day they're making new money. And it, it's under that whole idea of like, you don't have to charge a lot. And that was the whole thing with mobile games. And that's why a lot of mobile games were 99 cents. People were like, oh, they hurt the market stuff. But the idea is, if it's 99 cents, and you know there's like 10 million people that have this device, you're going to make a killing if you can even get 1% of those people for the 99 cents. Get yeah. a dollar from everybody. That was the <laughs> idea. You know, and that's what was going on with this. But uh, it, it seems to be working. It's, they're making a killing. I mean, if if you think under this logic, I mean, a lot of games could probably just say, you know what? Hey, we're not even going to charge. Just download the shit and just have cosmetics. Like, let's say the next uh, Call of Duty, for example, if they do decide to break off and just do like their own Battle Royale version. If this Blackout mode next time becomes its own game, it could easily be free to play if they start making money from the cosmetics and the microtransactions. Yeah. If they follow the Fortnite model, 
there you go. It that you don't have to pay for it. And what that what that does is that just gets more people into play because then you tell your buddy, oh, you want to get? Nah, I don't got sixty bucks. No, no, you don't need sixty bucks anymore. How much do I need? You need the price of free. That's what you need. You got free in your pocket. Yeah, I got free in my pocket. There you go. You download it, and then as time goes on, your buddies all want to start a clan. Want to get the matching suits and the matching vehicles? All right, dollar here, two dollars here. You don't think much of it, but if you spend a dollar, two dollars every day at the end of the week, it adds up. Yeah, for sure. And might I add, like you know, because think about it, there's there are very little barriers with this game. It's like, yo, I, I don't have the sixty dollars. Don't worry, it's free. Oh, I don't have a yep. PlayStation. Get it, get it on on on, on Xbox. I don't have an Xbox. I don't have an Xbox. Get it on Switch. I don't have a Switch. And, you have a phone. You get it on your phone. But it's then, like it's on and, then and that's where the crossplay comes in. Yeah. Because then, let's say you don't have the matching device with your buddies. Don't worry about it. We can still play together. And I don't know if you saw the notes that they released, but they're working on cross uh, achievement and trophy popping. So when you're playing and stuff, and then you go to your main default account, uh, your PlayStation or your Xbox, those things will pop up oh shit yes they have all kinds That's of things crazy. and it works for 2019 and these are tools that they're also going to hand off to support them when they're talking about handing off the code and stuff of crossplay they're talking about everything for cross I, I would i would think that to be honest it would probably not be for everything i would think it would be in the unreal environment nope they said not even unreal whatever mm -hmm. you're working on they want everybody mm -hmm. to use it if you want to use it in your game here it is it's not even with the unreal Damn. Mm hmm Interesting. Yeah, um, how long do you think Fortnite's gonna keep going? Uh, you know, in, in two thousand nine. If they if they stick on this model where they're constantly updating and always adding new content, doing big partnership deals with like what the NFL, they had the suits and the, the the uniforms and then they did the whole little Marvel thing where they had Thanos. If they keep that up and keep it fresh, they did a winter map, they just changed things up, they added all kinds of other little zip lines and features. Then people just keep playing. And now it's turned into a social event. It's sort of like when we play GTA, and a lot of people play GTA where they just go in, they pick one of the maps, and then they bullshit talk and just play, right? Don't take it yeah. too serious. That's what people are doing in Fortnite. Again, with their buddies, they're running around in the world building bullshit, but just hanging out. It's it's their social club. It's their way of hanging out. And that's what the kids are doing. So but here's one thing, because you know the old saying is like when your parents and grandparents start talking about something that's about to fade so and the reason i, I bring that up because literally the other day my mom was asking me do we say they for tonight <laughs> like oh, oh no, shit. No, no. well it's one thing to talk about it's another like, thing no mom i never heard of that of the most popular no. game out there i'm a video game journalist no i never heard of it <laughs> see but that's the thing it's one thing to talk about it's another thing to play it like that was the thing with facebook you know all kids love facebook they were doing it but as soon as parents were on there and then adding them and wanting to be friends with them and send them picture and see their friends that's when it didn't become cool anymore so until the day that your mom says hey put fortnite on my phone so i can play with you oh, then God. you know it's dead then you know it's dead. <laughs> <laughs> you see your mom running up. Yeah, you get a pancake. You get a pancake. like, oh shit, I'm done. I'm done. Don't eat cake, you know. What do you what do you think about it on the other some of the stories that came out that kids were becoming addicted and they actually have like counselors for the kids? I'm like, whatever happened to parenting? It's, you know? it's, it's, no, but that, that's nothing. That's always been there. That's it. That's there for everything. There was a, a kids watch too many cartoons. Remember? Yeah, so but back in our day, if, you, if, if if back in our day we didn't have like special counselors, you know, we had Jancleta. That's what we had. Well, no, you, know? you, you do have a you have a, well, not a special counselor, but you had the school counselor. You know, I remember my school counselor because I listened to a lot of metal and had band shirts and stuff, and they thought that was part of a cult or something. And I used to have to go to counseling. They even called my mom in for that shit. Yeah, but your mom wasn't the one that took you to counseling. Which that's what my point is. Like, no, par no, no, par no, parents like paying other people, you know, to watch, you know, to to like deprogram their kids. Or, the, or here's my favorite: pa parents paying professional Fortnite players to their kids how to play Fortnite. Like, what? What the fuck? <laughs> Yeah, you'd be surprised. Yeah. could you imagine thing. back in our day, we asked some mom for like, you know, we want a Mortal Kombat, uh, uh, you know, helper. They'll beat our ass. Yeah. Yeah, like, why can't you play the game on your own? Didn't I buy the fucking game for you already? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh my God, I'll buy you this strategy guide. Do it like they did back in the day. Read a fucking book and figure this shit out. Here yeah. you go. Up, up, down, left, right, left, right, half yeah. circles. Go. Yeah, be a start, you know. There you go. Crazy. All right, man. Um, anybody else want to say anything about the the Fortnite phenomenon? Phenomenon, 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 phenomenon. All right, all right, man. You go next. What, what, what do you think was a big story or important story to happen in? 
speaking in gaming. Oh, uh, the biggest and one of the biggest stories is uh, everybody figured out fucking Bethesda makes broken g- fucking games. <laughs> whoa, <laughs> damn! Whoa, 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 bring it whoa, the whoa, f- whoa. Yeah, slow I'm, I'm gonna bring it. I'm gonna bring it down, man. Because I'm, I'm I've been I haven't bought. A, a, I'm gonna tell you this. I've never bought a Bethesda game in my life, and for the pure reason because their games were so fucking broken. And the only reason why anybody gave that that company any sort of uh, you know, uh, any sort of acclaim or anything is because of the amount of things that you could do in the game. So now, what do you have? Well, a game where a lot of you can't do all the all the amazing things that you can do in a Fallout game, in a normal Fallout game. What happens? Everybody realizes, oh shit, this budget is broken. All the same problems that we've been fixing over and over and over again in the mod community, they still got them there. They haven't learned a damn thing. That is what I would say is is a big one. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to jump in with Mike because it's kind of related. This was the year where you saw some of the big titans kind of falling. Uh, Bethesda was oh, one man. of them, right? Damn it, and, Tony. Uh, yeah. yeah, you're taking mine too, Tony. You're yeah. going to mention you're going to mention the, uh, the other B word. All right, yeah. all right. Let's just say this. This is from Let's, Carlos, Tony, and I. Yeah, okay. So we're going to bunch them all together, right? Uh, yeah, because that, that was mine. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and that means we could just uh, trade off each other. Yeah. The, you know, Bethesda, as we mentioned, the other B, Blizzard. That was big. Like they were the titans of titans, and people had enough of the bullshit. Like it, it was just insane. Because think about it: before this, Blizzard had almost an impeccable track record, right? But yet they have BlizzCon. They announced the mobile game Diablo, and people were not having it. That was that had to be the biggest well, PR this blunder. Is the first time no, anybody no, no, I can't say this. No, I, yes, I, I can't, only because the game still works. They, this is different. They, they people were upset or disappointed, I should say, that they're not getting what they want. But they didn't release a bad game. You know, what I mean, like the, it's not like Diablo well, Three. No, but the, well, it got I engine mean, crashed. This, and, to be honest, I don't say I wouldn't totally say that it, that Blizzard has gotten. Uh, you know, I mean, they got a lot of flack for that one thing, but I think it's also starting to show that the the friggin um roots of 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 activision have slowly but surely started to rot away the inside of what blizzard was which they originally said no it's going to be okay you know activision's over there and we still make all the decisions as to the things we make so what are they doing they're making mobile games because mobile games are cheap to make and they make a lot of money because people just don't give a shit if they just throw a dollar at it. Or even if the game is free, you know, again, you throw like 99 cents or 49 cents to, to, to keep you going and then you're making millions and millions of dollars because nobody thinks to throw a, a, thinks about throwing a dollar away or a couple of exactly. A, a and it's so tempting, like I brought up in the chat, it's so tempting when you find out, you know, there's an install base, 20, 30 million people. Like, shit, if we just get 1%, come on, let's just mm-hmm. do it. You know, but the problem is, is that when you're at a special event like the, the, the BlizzCon, it's like, that's not what people want to hear. No, you know, go ahead, problem. announce it as one of the things. It's, put it as like your first announcement. Hey, we're doing a mobile game, but guess what else we're doing? You know what I mean? It's like, but that's what really hurt them. So it sucks, but yeah, but I see why they do it. I mean, look, we got EA with that crappy Command and Conquer thing that we saw over the summer. Oh, yeah. Did they even come out yet? Ouch! Ouch! Yeah, that was. Right? Did they? So I don't know, know if it came I mean? out or not. Wait, but but again, that was horrible. But, yeah, but going back to to Blizzard, yeah, it's like think about it, BlizzCon guys in the audience. Not mobile gamers. Let's just be honest. They're the hardest of the hardcore yeah, Blizzard yeah, fans. Yeah, yeah. They were not trying to be up there listening to a fucking mobile game. And we all know the only reason they had that announcement, that big grand was for the stockholders. They, the audience didn't give a fuck about yeah. it. You know, but, I, but the way they handled it, like, oh, don't you guys have phones? Like, the, It was just horrible. Yeah, you, know? you know, I think the only thing they could have saved them of uh, bringing up a phone a uh, phone game would be if they were just talking about Hearthstone, because that's already on phone, and it's a card game. It's like, alright, we get that. I mean, here's the thing, they, they, there's, there's, certain, there's certain situations where they've kind of earned the respect of those things. You know, Hearthstone, did Hearthstone start on a phone? It was on, yeah, well, it was no, it was on PC. And it was then on it PC, mobile, but you see... Because they you, wanted on the, the, to go, but it's a card game. But you, card. See, but you see what they did there. It started in the in the hardcore space, right? With the PC gaming space. So it still was it with, within that space. So what if you, what if they said, you know, what if this, this Diablo game was a different story and it started off as a PC game and I, then eventually moved to mobile? 
You mean the mobile game? If it turned, but I think well, yeah, if they, no, they, they, they would have announced if, if they would have announced one for comp, people would not have been as mad. What if yeah? What if it was announced first? So this for new, PC, new, yeah. This new Diablo was announced first as a PC game, and then eventually worked its way to mobile. Probably. And that was I think the, 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 the reaction wouldn't have been as, as severe, yeah, to be honest. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, I and agree. That's, I agree. One of the things, that's what one of the, the guys asked, one of the, and, and the crowd, the audience. Remember, he was like, hey, is this coming to PC? Like, can I play this on PC? Because then it's like, all right, let the, that audience try it at least on PC. If And if they really like it, then they'll jump to the mobile probably. And to, and and to be honest, said, no. the, the audience was the, – those the people, some of the people that were asking that were kind of being open to the idea up, up to the point where they list started saying no to down to going yeah. down the line. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They're like, uh, but you know, by any chance is this coming out for PC? No. By any chance is it? No. Don't you have a phone? And then, yeah, the, the, the strutter broke the camel back. Don't you have a phone? Yeah, we have a phone and we'll throw it at your fucking face. <laughs> yeah. You know, there's a lot of controls and stuff. Can I use my uh, Bluetooth control? No, you can't no. use that. <laughs> like, like, can I stick a keyboard to my? Can I stick a keyboard to my iPhone? No. Dude, I just I just wanted the response to be, and I I'm kind of happy that it was uh, when they're like, "Don't you have a phone?" You're like, "Yeah, I'm using it to tweet terrible shit about you right now." <laughs> that's <laughs> that's like honestly, I think that's gonna go down in history with get get a second job with TV. Oh yeah, oh something. yeah, like, it's on that level, man. But but we did get a hero out of this though. My man who came up there is this an off season April Fool's joke? April Fool's joke. Yeah. That guy's a legend now. You know, <laughs> yeah, because yeah, you gotta you gotta understand like like Tony mentioned it's 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 a it's a Blizzard specific convention with n- the hardcore of the hardcore fans showing. They up. paid to go in that place. They paid exactly. I wouldn't even pay to watch it on streaming for a set. <laughs> like like yeah, right. Pe- like people people went from God knows where around the world to watch this thing, and they were fucking pissed. So like if you if you fail to appease the audience that is the most likely to be blindly devoted to you, you know you fucked up. Like it's, even, it's hard to do that. Yeah, and even past Diablo developers, they're like, yeah, you guys fucked up. Mm-hmm. You know, even they're saying that. Yeah, yeah, man. That, that was a big debacle, but then obviously the whole thing with Bethesda, you know, and outside of, you know, Fallout 76 being all fucked up, everything, like, with the bag and all that, and like we said, the bag th- situation would probably not have been as bad if they liked the game. You know, yeah, but some I, people I, didn't yeah, like the, the game. bag situation was really that, that was the, the the bag situation was pretty is, them, up. is them grabbing at straws. It's like okay, they're already in a pissed off location, so they're looking for even more things. That I was like, ah, oh, fuck, this is wrong. Yeah, again, exactly. How many times have you gotten a special edition of a game and you know and and had the collectibles with it? And how you know many times like how cheap some of the shit that you get from those special editions. I have named the fucking Batarang for Batman Arkham Asylum. That is the shittiest thing ever. It was a piece of crap plastic <laughs> Batarang that they gave you with that thing. I also mentioned the, the Resident Evil 5 um, and Street Fighter uh, Street Fighter 4 special editions with their cheap canvas bag and their crappy figure that breaks when you drop it on a, on a oh, carpet. <laughs> yeah, I remember that. I remember yeah. that. <laughs> but the outreach for those. No, there was no, there was no outrage. You know why? Because people fucking like those games. I know. The, <laughs> this time people are like, "Shit! At least I got this bag. What the fuck is this?" Yeah, he's like, they're like, "Hey, man, I got the, like this game is not as what I expected, but at least I got this bag and this awesome helmet." Wait a minute, this bag doesn't look like the picture. <laughs> How come my helmet comes in a trash bag? Oh shit. <laughs> Yeah, man. So, you know, and then obviously EA, but EA is always getting shitted on. So that's nothing new there. You know, it's always something with EA. But yeah, it, it was very weird to see Bethesda and Blitz getting shit from fans. They're usually like the gold style. Um, so hopefully, it'll ma- you know, make them change their ways. But I think you're right, Manny. Like, it, it's really Activision putting their tentacles around Blizzard. Yeah, that's what well, finally they, happened. They were, they were saying they were, you know, they all, when they initially, everybody was afraid when um, when Activision and Blizzard merged or, or or Activision acquired Blizzard, right? Everybody was afraid. Oh shit, man! The evil empire just got Blizzard. You know, our darling, right? And then they're like, Blizzard's like, no, 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 no. Everybody's going to be cool. Everything's going to be the same. We're still going to make the awesome games that you like. And everybody's like, okay. Now, see, it was only a matter of time because, like, that poison leached in and affected things internally. And now 
we have come to see it leak to the consumer. Right? Have you the Diablo yeah. Immortal? That have you have happen. you ever thought though? I mean, in general, like if you look at the you know people like Hearthstone and people like uh, Overwatch, right? But haven't you? Don't you think that those games are also an example of the Activision interference? Because remember, Overwatch was supposed to be a single player sort of game. It well, wasn't supposed. To be supposed an it was supposed to be. It was. It was a, di a totally different sort of game. I feel like th those. I mean, granted, these these people like these sorts of experiences, but at the same time, I also think they're also examples of Activision interference. Yeah, Blizzard. And the only reason why they're accepting of it is because they're not. They're kind of semi half steps. Like they're not like totally intrusive. Blizzard has always done that, though. They'll come out with a game, they'll get three quarters of the way through it, scrap it, and then somebody get their hands on it and mod it and turn it into a new. Like, I mean, that, that was the inception of World of Warcraft. That was I, I can't. There are yeah, several games this, that start off that. In way. this case, I kind of agree with Manny. Like Overwatch was like they're like, okay, we we can't make this work, but how can we still monetize this? And they just turned it to Overwatch. Like I think the last thing they honestly made, like old Blizzard honestly made, was probably Diablo three. Like everything else after that seems to be like, all right, how can we just take what we have and with the least amount of work get the biggest return on investment? And that's where heroes came from. Um I right, settle down with that, Chris. Uh, <laughs> I know I'm not saying nah, it's a bad game. Exactly They're right, just like, right. okay, we we got this shit and we got the engine. Let's just let's just put together something. All right, uh, hard so put together a card game. I'm not I'm not blaming them, but now they've reached the bottom. You know, it's like shit. How so in in terms of like ROI, they're like, okay, what can we do now? What can we do now? And now they've reached the bottom. The bottom is when you go mobile, right? And they've reached the bottom. Yeah, no, you're right about that. We're gonna, we're gonna have to see what they're gonna do next. The only um, thing that, that I, I'll, I will say about this is I think Bethesda has a steeper hill to climb than Blizzard does when it comes to these uh, both of these um, topics. And yeah, and it's, it, to me, it's like Blizzard is like one step from being a Bioware, one bad step from being a Bioware. Oh, and Bioware is man. one bad step from being nothing. Yeah, from being in the graveyard of other, uh, EA, uh, you know, developers. Mm -hmm. I, if anything, I think Bioware is close to being sold. I think that would. Oh, yeah, if if Anthem doesn't sell, 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 if, 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 if Anthem doesn't, yeah. Yeah. Uh, if Anthem numbers, yeah. I think that's why they announced sold. Dragon Age with no game footage because they were like, "Hey guys, guys, we still have what you want. We still yeah. have." I, I, it seemed desperate to me, you know. Uh, yeah, it has no problem shuttering studios. We see that. So if Anthem fails, like there ain't gonna be no Dragon Age. Whereas I think Bethesda oh. will still be held up by uh like look, dude, Doom is coming out, right? Doom exactly. Bethesda can still lean on uh, uh on id software, but um who's Bioware gonna lean on? Anthem is it all the chips are in, man. EA's just looking at that shit. All the chips are in in, in Anthem. If Anthem fucks up, they're done. Yeah, no, I agree. They're, Oh, can, can I? Um, it, it seems like we're going to move on, but can I add a little uh, kind of a topic? Yes, I can stretch this out too. Okay, <laughs> it, it's so um, and, and it's a funny, it's a funny one. It's it's funny like just between me and Tony, pretty much, because I think nobody's going to get it. But there was a news article by Robert Workman, December 9th, twenty eighteen, so a few days ago. PlayStation 4 finally beats the Xbox 360 in sales numbers. Oh. So that means that it's it's still under the PS3 in overall sales numbers. So essentially, and I don't know how reliable VG charts is, so the PlayStation 3 is up by 700,000 750,000 wow, units. Wow, it's that close. Yep. So, a bet that me and Tony made what, like two years ago? It seems like two yeah, years it was, ago. It was all. It was like, it must have been middle of last year. It was a long. Yo, Carlos. Yo, we still got like sixteen days though. <laughs> we got sixteen. We got sixteen days. Yo, and but even if they're up by one, you still win the bet. You yep. know what I'm saying? It'll be yep. interesting. So this this essentially is coming down to the wire. Crazy, yeah. Because I thought it would have been like a big, bigger, like you know, gap between them by now. Oh, 
Mr. Yep. Um, Brett, uh, what did you want to say to extend the segment? Oh, uh, I, I think that there's a, a, a kind of theme here that I'm curious a little bit about tapping into. Um, I'm not going to say, I'm not going to defend Fallout or anything like that, but what I will say is that I feel like a little bit of the, the there's more to it than just the game being buggy. Um, there, there's, there's a pent up kind of hatred there, even just down to like, you know, Tony and I have talked about um, people freaking out over the VAT system and things like that. And this seems to be kind of a, an overarching narrative this year. You know, we, we, there was a huge backlash against the EA. There's been a huge backlash against uh, Bethesda. Um, I mean, hell, we even uh, the, the the community even started to pull out their pitchforks against Rockstar, which is oh, not yeah. something I really ever I believe. I have never I have never given Rockstar one either. Part of the reason why I only pl- I, I like Red Dead, but I am not going to give it Rockstar any of that stuff either. Never no, did. No, no. I, no, I no. absolutely he, understand saying, that. He's but saying that uh-huh. you actually saw some backlash to Rockstar. You've never seen that before. Mm. Right about that. You talking so, about the online? Um, the online and even some of the game itself. People are like, oh, look, what's up with these controls? They're they're yeah. chunky. Uh, so, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, there yeah. there was like a backlash to former Titans. There's definitely a theme running. And I'm, I'm, I'm yeah, wondering is is that because gaming has reached an impasse where there are these critical problems that need addressing, or is it because the the community is getting less uh, complacent and and more think people more i think people more vocal thanks to social media and also the audience is getting older remember this gaming is still fairly young i mean we we were all there when it started think about it, most of us i mean we grew up when it just started coming into the home so now these people are older and they're vocal and they want to get their voice heard and they're bitching look at crossplay look at crossplay yeah, well, that's another big thing that i was yeah. going to toss into the mix you know Oh, no, but you're right about that. I, I don't know what it is. Like, I, I guess social media is the big thing, but I think people just had enough. Had enough. Oh, and it, I, and, yeah, go ahead. Oh, no, I, I feel I feel exactly that. I feel like we're approaching a point, and, and maybe next year we'll still be talking about this. I think gamers are getting to the point where they've had fucking enough in a lot of aspects, and they, we're reaching critical mass, it feels like. That's just my opinion. A little bit of a microcosm to it in the west but that's a story for another day man um but yeah i got we got to toss it in there man um cross play the the talk of cross play was a big thing this week. uh we had many good episodes of throw down to say the least because of that man. um but despite all the talk and i'm just just my perspective now uh it kind of you know like it, it was a heavy thing during e3 when you found out that you know you can cross play uh fortnite across all the all the things all, all the consoles but at the end of the year no one's talking about it as much, or at least the media, I should say. And that's one, you know, this is going to give me a time to do a little bit of a correction. I, I don't take back anything I said in my last talk of this, but I do feel I should have come down more on the media because they these guys were so happy to jump aboard this crossplay train, but they're not doing it at, during the fall I now. When you, have, when you have Call I of Duty and, and Battlefield, I'm talking about the media. You don't see any of these big sites doing it the way they did in the same volume. I'm like, where are you guys? Where's but the they, con- consistency? They, like there's I still, saying, there's still you know? a war going on overseas, and we don't hear about that either, but it's still happening. It's just yeah. that the media wants to move on to the next big thing. That's just what it, it has. hasn't even it's been six that. months since the whole uproar. Doesn't though, matter. Man. Doesn't you know? matter. It what does matter. Do? It does matter. It, it's for you, it, maybe, but for them, they don't. Uh, That's what I'm saying, like with the Fortnite giving away I the. I forgot the I have a podcast tonight, so uh, can I hitch up after that and see where you're at? Uh, yeah. Right, just say whatever you want. You know how this works, dude. Sorry. <laughs> um, what was I gonna say? Oh, now you lost my train of thought. Brett, just say what you're gonna say, man. No, I think he was on the phone, man. Oh, I thought he was talking yeah, to me. Yeah. I'm like, what the fuck? Did I miss? You know how he missed shit, you know? Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. Oh, so, but I... Yeah, that, but that was definitely a big thing. Um, you know, big story during the summer that quickly evaporated from my estimation. No, it hasn't. Well, from yours, but it's still there, just like I pointed out today. That's huge news. You're going to hear about it all over the media tomorrow because that came out what, later this afternoon today. So that's going to be play? huge. No, the the fact that they're giving that code off free to all developers because then now that, we're going to see... That, like, was it yesterday they talked about it, actually? That was today. It came out yeah. today. Mm-hmm. So it was like, here, get it now. So that's going to be huge to see. And you're going to see a lot of developers that are using it. And then that's going to bring it back into the news. Because we're like, hey, guess what? We got this new game coming. Oh, yeah. And it's got crossplay. 
And yeah. Scott Cross. Because, think... you know, my, go ahead. no, because I was going to say, like, I thought the way the talks were going, I'm like, okay, if you guys are being this energetic about it now, I'm going to see that during the fall, right? And it didn't happen. I found that very weird. You know, can, I compare, can I compare this to so, a political thing? Uh oh, be careful now. Yeah, be I know. Be careful now. <laughs> so think about it like this Bernie Sanders, as a candidate, had no recognition or anything and swelled up this huge sort of kind of movement right and ever since he lost the primary it died down but if if he decides to run again there is sort of like a like a um what do you call it like there's a ground base like that's ready to sort of to oh he's got on. a support base he definitely has a support base if Bernie he decides bros, to come man yeah. yeah so so it's Bernie like for Brooklyn so it's like like I think crossplay kind of has something similar where it's like no one was talking about it because crossplay didn't really exist, like or was in the minds of a lot of people. Now it's sort of kind of kind of in the zeitgeist. So whenever all it needs is sort of another spark or no, either another game or so or someone sort of speaking not loud about it that has like a huge megaphone, and, and that would be epic. And and, and, and the biggest. Well, yeah, it and, happened because of Fortnite, the biggest game up there. Yeah, yeah. But that's what I'm saying. And the fact that they're saying, hey, it's not just going to be us. Here's the code. Do it yourself. Here, everybody, take it free. Go, do it, do it. They want to spread it. They want this to happen. Like you said, they want everybody doing it. Yeah. So they don't want to hear people saying, well, we don't know how to do it. It's going to take time in our small game. Because I can see a lot of indie games also just implementing it, using it as a selling point. So, well, Carlos, just so I understand you correctly, you're saying that crossplay is the gaming equivalent of a populist movement. <laughs> yeah, kind of. Is it, I'm like, being an asshole the, right now, but you know the, what it, I mean. The, 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 ground, the ground troops are there. They're not at war yet. They're just, they're waiting for <laughs> for the general to make, to make, give the call, you know? It's like... Sleeper agents. <laughs> I was going to say something, but I'm going to stop myself right now. All right. <laughs> um, the Americans. Um, I asked the guys in the... No, not, no, that's not a... No. Stop that, Kristen. Stop that. She's at the Sonic poster. Oh, we're not talking about that. Oh. We're not talking about that. We're not talking about that. Oh, <laughs> yeah, by the way, me and Manny tweeted out. Nobody oh, got the boy. joke. Nobody got the joke because they're all a bunch of baby young, youngins. That's why. Yeah. Um, single player games still lead the quality and innovation. That's what Roach Smoke says. Um, yeah, you know. I don't know about yep. like you know yeah they do but they don't make as much money you know uh that's what uncle phil was talking about um mm -hmm. but it's true you're right but the biggest games some of the biggest games there were single player which lets you know people still want them to play with the gaming industry I'll, I'll, I'll argue the whole quality and innovation thing is is not necessarily being untrue but subjective it's a good, zelda it's subjective <laughs> um all right um any other stories you guys want to quickly pop in there Super quick, um, the VGAs is doubled its, its viewership from last year, which yeah, is crazy. That's because we streamed it. That's why. It, it, yeah, we we, we made that shit more interesting. <laughs> why, why ain't Jeff giving us a check, man? Where's that check? <laughs> Cut the check, Jeff. <laughs> yeah, so it's pretty interesting. Like that, like that might end up being sort of the biggest show of the year for gaming in the future. Which is oh, crazy to think yeah. about. Yeah, uh, I can, if you're talking about bigger That's gaming bad. future. I could see every game, every publisher having their own uh, game service, streaming service, also on consoles. That's the, the other trend. Oh, that we've we're been seeing. talking about that for years. That's yeah, my, but that's I think no, I know, but I have a feeling. Yeah, next year it's going to be all out. Just like you see the EA access on Xbox, you're going to probably see the Ubisoft bring their Ubisoft Club, and you'll see all the other ones bring in their shit. It's like, hey, we all want to have our own sub. So it's it's it is scary. It is scary. We could talk about that in the final say. That that's kind of interesting. Um, all right. Um, let's move on to all right. The 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 meat of it, man. Best and worst games of two thousand eight. Um. So just to keep it simple, we're gonna go through our top three. Um. I'm gonna start with Brett. What are your top three games in order? Two thousand eight. Man, I've uh, I didn't know we were doing three. Um, I've really wrestled with this actually. Uh, I would probably say, um, 
Spider-Man, Monster Hunter, God of War. That's one, two, three, or three, two, one? One, two, three. Okay. All right, uh, briefly tell us why. Um, I, I mean, Spider-Man took my game of the year because I just, I honestly had more genuine fun playing it than I did any other game. I know it's a weird metric to measure it by, but it was one of those games where, like, I just wanted to run back to it. I had fun from the moment that I picked it up to the moment that I put it down. There was no part of it that I felt was unsatisfying or gristle. I mean, fuck, even some of the fetch quest and challenge missions, which are usually a fucking grind, were still fun in this game. Uh, I appreciate it on a personal note how they issued the whole need to tell the origin story again and actually made a nod towards people who, I don't know, have been following Spider-Man for most of their adult life. Um, so that that was pretty cool. So all in all, it was a really well-published game. Like, I can't point out anything and say it was great except for this. So all I can say is it was great. Um, Monster Hunter comes in number two because I just had an amazing time playing it. I think it's it's actually a really this is what the game industry needs to see. And I feel like it should be held up because it was an incredible adaptation to a a triple A game and introduced it to a new platform of people or a, a new brought it to a new platform and a new group of people. It opened it up to a wider audience and it did so damn near flawlessly. And since then it has continued to be updated regularly. Uh, they have good player engagement and all around the game was, was fun. And I had a great time playing with these guys here. Um, and God of war, I will say it was, uh, I love the art direction. I love the, the way that they took it. The only oh, reason man. it didn't make it higher on my list was, um, I felt that there were parts of the game that felt a little incomplete. And I, at first I had thought it was because they were going to do DLC, um, you know, open up some of the other realms and now it's not really looking so much that way. They might be waiting for a full on sequel, um, and it left on kind of a cliffhanger thing. So while I really enjoyed it, I can't say that it, it didn't leave me wanting a little bit more from the experience. You know, just a couple few more hours or not even more time, but just more summation to the story. I, I get that they're building a trilogy, but I got kind of a very Lord of the Rings thing. It's like, ah, OK, well, now I guess I'll just wait forever for the next bit. It just, it just wasn't as satisfying as Spider-Man was. And I feel Spider-Man has just as much opportunity to continue its narrative. So I don't, I don't really give God of War the pass on the whole, it's it's a bigger part of a story. I feel like you could have made a more satisfaction conclusion to just that part of the story, maybe. Um, that's just me, though. I still call it my you know third in, in game of the year, so I, I obviously fucking loved it. And God of War also had the line of 2018. Boy. 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 No, that was the line. Oh, Yeah. Christopher Judge as uh, Kratos oh. was an amazing choice. I mean, there are just so many things about that game that were just fucking phenomenal. Like, it, it I realize I, 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 from the sounds of it, you may hear me complaining a bit. Like, I do want to reiterate, I loved this fucking game as the third best game of the year, and that was a tough fucking choice. I may look back on this at the culmination of the series and be like, I think the storytelling was perfect, but as of right now. It, it just, it, it eked down by a hair. And I know that there's a lot of people who think that, that two and three should probably be flipped on that list. I'm, I'm almost one of them, but I, I think just for the fact that uh, Monster Hunter did what it was supposed to do in the sense of it made it easy to hook up with friends and have a good time. And that's what it was supposed to do. And, you know, I think at the end of the day, social and mul multiplayer games are supposed to bring people together. And Monster Hunter did a great job of that. So, Brownie points. All right, uh, Chris, your top three games, and uh, I have to go. Let's see, it's tough. I have to go. Red Dead Redemption Two, Monster Hunter World, and God of War, in that order. As one, two, one, two, three. One, two, three. Yeah. I'm sensing a theme, and I'm gonna um. It up myself when I go keep on going <laughs> just, just briefly why you like those games oh I mean Red Dead's freaking story was fantastic man I ain't had feels like that since the first game um the the, it, the narrative was so well written like it's uh it's it felt like um like watching a really good western play out except you participate in it and 
the Arthur Morgan story comes full circle, and you see all this stuff happening around him. And you see every uh, uh, many people, many characters have an arc, even though some you don't even expect. Um, so it's uh, it was a great, great story, and I I enjoyed that. So whenever they get the online fixed, that'll be great too to play. But I mean, that's that that single player was enough for me, man. Um, Monster Two is great. Playing with all you guys is great. I think it's a fantastic game. And playing with friends, it's amazing. Um, not not much story wise there. It's just the experience was just fantastic. The combat, the the variety of weapons, the raids, all that stuff that was really good. Um, and God of War, also another amazing narrative story. Like that that whole Kratos's adventure, and then it, the putting him in the role of a, of as a father, and he's not just angry Spartan man who's raging against the gods and he doesn't give a shit about anyone now he has to care about someone and they did that so well so i think that was great i mean i, I honorable mention like i would have put spider-man on there but i think god of war for me edged it out for me man just because that story boy <laughs> all right um i'm gonna jump in so my number one like actually our lists are very similar until the third one. My number one is Red Dead, uh, for obvious reasons. Great Western. Uh, I love how just like okay, they, this game proved to me why or demonstrates to me why Rockstar does open world games better than anybody else. Man, I've been obviously you know I've been playing a ton of open world games this, this generation. I've been getting a little tired of it. You know, I used to love the, the genre, but this one reminded me. Oh, this is why I love this fucking genre. It's, it's so well done. You really feel like even if your character is not in the game, when you're off, like if you're sleeping, you feel like that world is still going on independent of you. You know, it, it's just so good. The the story, you know, uh, both uh, Arthur Morgan and a certain other character. It's like, oh my God, this is so fucking good. It puts you in there, man. Um, little disappointed with, with the with the online at the at this moment but you know they'll probably get that but like i said that's just a fucking uh you know um a fortune cookie to me you know like the main thing is the the, the story the, the like i want to replay it that's how crazy it's it is. the icing on the cake yeah the, uh, the icing could be you know now it's more like the cherry on the cake that you could get rid of the fucking cherry <laughs> yeah i don't care about the cherry but that icing... it's the pineapple of the cake oh oh no Dude, bring it back. Throw, it out. Accurate throw that whole shit in the, in the fucking garbage <laughs> all right so it now... doesn't need to be there and it kind of ruins what's there a little bit <laughs> oh, yeah man. pineapple salute boxes man oh, i get rid of that <laughs> all right uh my number two and number three both have some in common games i didn't think i would like and ended up on the top of my fucking list somehow. Number oh, two, yeah. you already know, man. I'm going to just keep with the theme going. Monster oh, Hunter sense. World, man. Oh, my fucking nice. God. Now, okay, Monster Hunter is a franchise I've loathed for, like, a long time. I hated fucking Monster Hunter. You know, I thought the, the controls were clunky. The, the game looked fucking ugly, you know, but when I saw Monster Hunter World, I'm like, you know, and then I played it, especially with you guys, and it's, I, I didn't put, like, if it wasn't for Red Dead, this would have been easily my number one game. You know, just on the sheer amount of hours I put into this bitch, 258, most of those with you guys, since they're constantly updating it. They updated it right now. I was in there the other day. You know, I, I love the game and I'm very, very hyped. When I saw that um, trailer for the expansion that's coming next year, I almost shit my pants. Like, are you kidding me right now? We're going to do this again? Oh. They keep it coming. And how much have you paid for all of this stuff? 60 fucking yeah. dollars. Think about like this, $60, and they haven't made you pay a single microtransaction that you, like, you know, like, there's no in-game currency or shit like that. Like, you could just buy costumes or whatever, but nothing crazy. Like, they could have easily go, hey, you want some of these uh, stones? Eh, give us five real dollars. They didn't do any of that stuff, you know? Like, they're, they're doing right by gamers. And they, it's actually they never pushed you toward the microtransaction. No, they, they, well, the thing is, you can't, like, you cannot buy in game currency. That's what I'm saying. They, like, you know how, like, even Red Dead Online has, like, regular currency and then premium currency. None of that shit, you know, which is really good. Um, but yeah, Monster Hunter is so good. I cannot wait to go back there. And my number three, again, this a oh, huge fucking shock to me. I never even played any of these games. Dragon Quest XI, man. I'm like, whoa, this came out of nowhere and it just satisfied me to my core. I love JRPGs, but I feel they've kind of, gotten like they kind of lost the the narrative you know no pun intended but this one like it, here's the thing it's not doing anything innovative right but it's just so well crafted so well done 
it's like the the video game equivalent of like comfort food you 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 played you just feel good you know and then especially after playing so many gloomy games it's just nice to play like a kind of heartwarming chill out type of game you know and then the combat is really good um the the graphics i i really dig but it, i i think one of the reasons on my list is because also i played two other jrpgs this year um nino kuni 2 and octopath I was very high for both of them. They both disappointed me. Then you have this other JRP I had no even intentions of playing, and it just blew me away. You know? So got to give it to that. And then honorable mentions, which actually mean four and five, uh, God of War and Spider-Man, for the reasons you guys mentioned. Fantastic fucking game. All right, um, let's move on to Mr. Adam. Uh, Number three, toward the bottom of the, the first will be my, my main one, but number three would be Diablo 3 for the switch that should really count bro that does count because that was they did a lot of work and they added right, a lot of let it slide. <laughs> that definitely works man because that just came out um uh, that one it's just you talk about comfort food that's it that's on the go man i i play it every day during lunch i have to i it's just it's so relaxing just dungeon crawling running around it's so smooth the interface everything nothing feels downgraded nothing feels half-assed i fit this the legit version of diablo 3 with all the fixings i'm playing as a necromancer on the go i love it using my 8 beat controller I'm, I'm happy plugging my headphones it's, it's great uh the second one is red dead Red Dead is great, so I haven't finished it, but I'm enjoying it, and I think I'm going to be spending a lot of time with it. Even whenever online launches, that it'll be when it's there. But right now, I'm not a big deal with it because uh, I haven't finished the story, so I don't really care. And number one is God of War. That world, that story was amazing. Yeah, the the camera angle, the fact that they just tracked that one camera shot, it was really immersive. You know, you just felt like you were there. Of course, the voice acting was amazing. And every turn, every corner, there was always something new going on, something to see. You just felt you you felt like you were in the world. It didn't just feel like a game. And, and I, I still want to go back and do all the little side stuff because I didn't kill all the Valkyries. But, uh, man, that was, that was amazing. That was an amazing experience. You know, so for me, that was my number one. Number two, of course, Red Dead and then three, Diablo, Switch. Um, I realize nobody here said anything about Mario or any of that shit, or it wasn't that all this year, also. No, that no. was Mario Odyssey was last year, 2017, yeah, and it was my top three. Yeah, it was, I think it was mine. So, um, Carlos, man, what are yours? So, uh, Heroes of the Storm, uh, <laughs> Skyrim on Switch. No, I'm just joking. Going <laughs> no, uh, solitaire on let, Windows. Let, yeah. Let's go, Pikachu. Um, so. F- I'm I'm just trying to think what which direction to go. Three to one, one to three. Anybody want one to decide for me? I'll decide for you. Go um three to three, one. Yeah, three to one, man. Okay. Okay. All right, cool. So my number three, and the only reason why it's number three is it, or the main reason why it's number three is because I haven't finished it yet, and that's Red Dead Redemption Two. I've only played maybe five or six hours of it, but even even that is enough for me to freaking fall in love with this game. Like, I I really appreciate like a, you guys mentioned a lot of stuff about it, but something that I really appreciate about the game is that it feels like that whole community aspect of of the the camp where all the people are, are yeah. residing. It it just feels like it's alive. It feels like every person in that camp is important and. And every every person in that camp has a story, and that's something that's just really attracts me to the game, and it's something that w- makes me want to keep playing it. And man, the the voice acting is amazing, the music is amazing, and the graphics are ridiculous. Like I, I didn't, ex- I, yo, when I was playing that shit on my TV, <laughs> son, I showed my nephew. <laughs> yo, it's fucking crazy, man. It's crazy, man. The great, like. <sighs> I just wish, like, it's it's it sucks because I'm right now I'm not sort of in a gaming mood per se, but like I think about playing Red Dead Redemption every day. I know it's it's weird, but yeah, it, it's it's definitely it's definitely my number three for now. And I mean, I guess it's definitive now because it's the it's the last uh, it's the game it's a year end show. But well, may, maybe if you finish, it'll move up. You know. Yeah, maybe, but... They'll release it again next year. Yeah, that is true. (laughs) So, number two for me was God of War. So, 
I don't know. Like, can I even add anything to that that hasn't been mentioned? Like, the the freaking uh, axe mechanics were amazing. How about that? Yeah, there you go. It was it was freaking crazy, man. Like, just playing that game, it it, it was so fun. Like, it was like it felt like I don't know. It was it's it's hard to reinvent something that's already mega popular, and God of War did that. And and honestly. This uh, here comes a bold statement here. Uh oh, this might be my favorite God of War game. Oh, because you know why? Bold. Also, I didn't fucking hate Kratos. I hated Kratos. Like I loved God of War three. I loved God of War one. God of War two was okay. I love Chains of Olympus and Ghost of Sparta, but I never really liked Kratos. And I, I that I don't know. Maybe maybe that's the appeal of the game for me. That. I just didn't like the main character, hmm. but everything else about the game was amazing, or the franchise was amazing. Um, and yeah, I think this game might be better than those for me. Interesting. And yeah, I, I, I just, I just really, I just really love that game. And it, it, it's one of those, it's one of those games also that I think you appreciate more time, like once time passes after you beat it. Because it just makes you reflect on like the experience and and the narrative. The narrative, man. The, like Christy, Christopher Judge, man. I yeah, that's that's Kratos boy. now. That's that's Kratos, <laughs> boy. And Reed boy. And it's it's ah man, yeah. God of War number two, and number one. I will say Far this. Cry. I had <laughs> no, it's, yeah, <laughs> Call of Duty Black Wild Ops Land. Four, no. Wild Land, the Division Two. Oh, um, stealing my thunder. Look at you. <laughs> yeah. So, I had a number one. I think we. I don't know. This this was like a couple of months ago that we like we did like sort of our predictions for game of the year, and I had a game, a different game, which I'll do an honorable mention. So the honorable mention is Spider Man. Ooh, it's not in my top three. Interesting. The more I think about it, the more I, I just I'm like, I love the game, but I think the the swimming mechanics just overwhelmed me, and 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 sort of just kind of disguised like a lot of the game. Like that's that's my main enticement with the game, and I think. I still like. I kind of agree with uh, with Adam. Some of the, cri- the the critiques he had at the beginning, where it's like they could have been more varied sort of missions and stuff. I think it would have added a little bit more. Um, but overall, the the game's still great, so I, I don't want to knock, knock on it. Um, but my number one, man, it's come on. We we I played like I think I played two hundred hours of this game. It's fucking Monster Hunter Worlds, man. Like, it's crazy. I'm, I'm like, going to say right now, Monster Hunter World is an official game of the year for Throwdown. That's four of us have been in our top three, <laughs> man. You know? Yo, man. What, like, freaking... It never got boring. It never got boring. We could have we could have fought the same fucking monsters over and over again, and it still didn't get boring. Freaking, like, launching fucking Tony up in the air all the time. Yes. That shit was fucking hilarious, man. Yo, those streams are fucking epic. Freaking look! Looking at bread just jumping around like looked like he was fucking flying and shit. That shit was fucking crazy. And then, like you know the immortalization of that, that, that's one of the that's that's well that's, it, that's I, a catchphrase I, now, man. That was that was a catchphrase. Yeah, it got immortalized there. But no, it was in GTA. No, it was in GTA. Yeah, Adam's right. But well, last year's catchphrase then. <laughs> so. Um, oh, also, uh, wait, like, uh, oh, go ahead. One uh, sort of breaking news. I don't know if you noticed, PlayStation has this big holiday sale. They put Fallout 76 on sale for 40 bucks. Wow. 40 oh, bucks. And wow. the, the second catchphrase of the, of the year for, for gaming is, it's Nergigante. Gigante. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Monster Hunter World's my game of the year. Number one, 2018, for sure, man. And number one. <laughs> Andy, I kind of purposely left you out because you didn't play that many games. I mean, I can, I can, I can fit in. Your, oh, you know, and by the way, we, we purposely three. left Brian off the show because Ooh. of this. Oh, no. 
<laughs> right, no, I'm just joking. Yeah, Manny, go ahead. What are your top three? I'm curious. Well, I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna say the this is a um, uh, you know by, you know the, not worse but like you know the the lowest one uh, the first one on number number three that's gonna be Monster Hunter World. Uh, number two is uh going is going to actually number two is gonna be God of War. And uh, my top is actually Spider Man. Yeah, we have Spider Man. Man. Spider Man. So yeah, the only it's only it's only slightly unfair for God of War. The only reason why it's at two is because I haven't fully finished the game, but I've enjoyed it so far, and I'm pretty close to the end. And I had most of the game spoiled by everybody in this room. But yeah, I it's it's definitely a really cool game. And then also Monster Hunter World is the only time that Throwdown. Everyone on Throwdown, with the exception of Brian, I think. Yeah, I wasn't on there. I was yeah, well, there. with the exception of Brian and and Adam, that we most of us had had it, and it was usually people that usually that don't get everything. You know, like it's you know, it's I, I feel like sometimes it's you know everybody else is playing something like uh you know GTA, which I don't own. Everybody else is playing some other online game, which I don't own, and this is the with the exception of Bloodborne, which is the only only other only other one that we actually all had been able to play. And once, which is cool, and uh, yeah, Spider Man is just a good time, you know. My the the only platinum that I did this year, <laughs> which is sad, but yeah, uh, it was a lot of fun, and you know, I can't wait to see what they do next with it. I mean, uh, as as much as I enjoyed the game, I, I want to see them expand the city. Now, you know, we're at Spider Man two, like larger than Spider Man two level. So now let's go to the other the boroughs, man. Get us some queens in there, son. Go to Jersey. <laughs> ah, no, you don't need to go to Jersey. He'll probably get lost. His GPS will get all confused. Yeah, <laughs> there's not enough tall buildings for him to swing around. He'll swing. He'll, <laughs> he'll be downtown. He'll land in a, he'll land in a Jersey city. In a, in a dirt, in, uh, you know, uh, in a, in a, you know, a shitty part of Jersey and get shot up or something. <laughs> I said he's gonna have a hard time swinging. Pros too. Not a lot of tall built. No man, that's good. He's he managed to do it in Queens. He could do it out there. Doing some trees. <laughs> Doing some trees, man. All right. Um, and Long I'll, Island City, Long Island City is going to be uh, is going to be a uh, uh, Amazon town. They're going to have lots of high rises and shit over there. Get a little bit of leak over of tall building. <laughs> All right. Um. What about some of the worst games we played this year? <laughs> I know one that I know one of Tony's. Wait, I'm going to say but now the. I know one. First game I played. Now the thing about this game was I, that I Metal Gear su- Survive. That doesn't even. He exist. never owned it. <laughs> He's spoiling shit, man. Yeah, right. No, I thought he played. He hated that. Yeah, he did hate it, but you know, I don't. So I, this is worse I, than I, that. Then Quiet Man know. came along. <laughs> yeah, Quiet Man was worse you know, because at least Metal, Gear, you know, of some kind. Quiet Man is this weird blend, FMV, eat him up and. It was just bad, dude. Like I like you know the the main character is deaf and no one uses sign language in the game. Uh, they interpret. They, they do use sign language. It's just they never translate it. Yeah, <laughs> but it's not like they do it for like three seconds, and it's mostly that guy going eh, eh, eh. like, no, you got to do the thing, man. Um, yeah, and you know the story made no fucking sense. And when you have the volume on, you're like, please turn it back off. This is terrible. <laughs> you know. Uh, terrible game, and the thing is, like, because I I interviewed the, the the developers, and they sold me on. I'm like, oh, this is gonna be a cool game, and I got. I'm like, oh, this is. I had to be real with the review, you know, shitty game. Um, but outside of that, I didn't really play horrible, horrible. Yeah, like Adam, I did play that your demo, but it was just a demo. I didn't play the. Whole game. Oh, I thought you played it and did a review or something. Fuck no, <laughs> Konami doesn't like me anyway. So, um, yeah. Yeah, quiet man for me. Um, maybe I'm missing something, but that's the most egregious example I could think. Um, what about you, Adam? What's the worst game? Uh, I can't say anything like super bad. Like I'm trying to think. I was thinking about this before. I'm like anything that it had to be something that came out this year, right? I'm trying to think. I mean, the only one that I could really throw in there, and it's just because for me, it just it was such a letdown is the call of duty block house four you know it just i'm not a fan of that mode battle royale it looked really bland even when i played it, it looked really bland the multiplayer i tried to get into it. i love multiplayer it just 
didn't feel right to me. It just I, and I get it. It definitely felt like Black Ops Three with their multiplayer, but it just I don't know something about it didn't run me the right way. And this is the first time in a long time that during the winter season I'm not playing a COD shooter. Usually at this time I'm all in it, just like World War Two and all the other ones, all in it. Even when they went to space, and I was like, shit, I still finished the campaign. I still went through it because it was still you know a cock. This one just didn't do it. It just didn't do it. It let me down big time. So I, I have to put that on my shit list. And you know what? I know we don't talk about the numbers or anything, but the UK released some numbers for their holiday period of sales, and it wasn't even in the top five. You know, it was up to number seven, and that's very rare for a Call of Duty game. Usually, especially during the holiday, it's always in the top five or top two or three. You know what I mean? Because it's, it's the game. It's the shooter. And it's not. And if if there's any time for it to dominate, it would be now because Battlefield Five obviously dropped the ball. So to me, that was my my letdown. I should say it wasn't worse, but it was a letdown. I'm disappointed. Yeah, you could you, you know, could have you could have letdowns too. It doesn't have to be like the worst piece of crap ever, you know. You had him. Oh do you shit. Know, do you know? Do you know what else was pretty rare? Um. My most disappointing game of the year. Sea of Thieves, man. Yo. Oh, yeah, like, that was disappointing. Yo, man. I'm so like, ah, oh, man. I'm but not, I didn't I'm have high expectations. You really had high expectations? I thought we all yeah. agreed that it wasn't going to be that good, and that's why we did the game. We were like, all right, let's try it. But we, I don't think anyone said, damn, well, this is going to. Like, for example, Fallout. Brett when did. we were you talking about, Brett? Was oh, like, yeah, no, only Brett. Only Brett, though. That, that's what I'm saying. When we, <laughs> no, Carlos was Fallout, a little hype, though. I, I was no. hyped. Yeah, remember when we saw Fallout seventy six? We watched. We were like, "Oh yeah, you know what? If Brett builds everything, we'll jump in and play." Right? Remember, we all agreed on that much. We were like, "Yeah, yeah, all right, this looks sort of playable." What for does us. that have to do with Sea of Thieves? I don't think anybody said that. We all just jumped in because we had that game pass, but nobody really gave this shit. We only did it just to do it. Oh no! I mean, I I was excited about it because I knew, like, first off, all of the baggage that this game had to carry was was crazy because it it was rare trying to get back to whatever form it used to be um and it was a it was an xbox exclusive that they were hyping up so i'm just to me i'm like i was just hyped because i knew how how important this game was to to xbox and how important it was for to rare specifically in in the xbox division so i was just hyped because I wanted this to be a good game, and I wanted to play it, and I wanted to enjoy it. And unfortunately, I I, I didn't. I just I was I was really disappointed. I, I there was a lot of the trailers. I, I liked the 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 sailing mechanics, the ship mechanics, the way it in, interacts with the environment, with sort of wind, and the water looks pretty uh, pretty amazing. But other than that, it was uh, it was it it wasn't it didn't really meet my expectations or it didn't even get close so yeah that was mine all right uh, I, I, and, I, and I, I just had to i i don't know i just i just wanted to do that segue part with bear that's why i went yeah no that was good um chris disappointing game or you know you know let down or whatever uh the worst thing i probably played this year was the metal gear survive demo oh god like that thing was just terrible and yeah. yeah, there's no way I was gonna pay for that game. So even though it's like, oh, it's like not the worst game, there's no way that I wouldn't give Konami money for that shit. It's insulting to the Metal Gear franchise and the memory of Hideo Kojima uh, video games. It's insulting to my mother. It's insulting. <laughs> period. It sucks. Um, I've I've avoided a lot of stuff like you. I mean, I think you told me about Quiet Man, and I was kind of curious. And and you and Manny both played it. Manny, did you like Quiet Man? I thought it was I thought it was okay. I didn't think it was nearly as bad as, as Tony thought it was. Um, I think I think it has I think it has issues, but I think uh, issues that could have been solved creatively, and it, it just it, the whole the whole fact that the whole game is 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 not you know doesn't have any sound, you know, or has like a weird wonky sound. Like it, it really didn't it really didn't do it any favors. I feel like. If we're gonna go into a world, a world of a deaf person, right? So obviously this deaf guy can read can read people's lips, right? So why can't it be where he looks at somebody and he sees when he's directly looking at somebody, he sees what they're saying? You know, you see subtitles, but when he's not, 
you know, you don't, or you can have a situation where like, you know, just using the rumble or even when he, you know, when he talks himself, being able to hear himself, like when he says things, you know, simple simple sorts of creative things that they could have done. Yeah. I say I dodged some bullets just, yeah. yeah, Like Neo, you know? Yeah. And, uh, I mean, I heard about some stuff like think about like back in the day, I liked, um, the Fear Effect games on PS1. And then I read reviews for the new one because I'm like, oh shit, they brought back Fear Effect? Wow, I used to play that on PlayStation. Yo, that game sucks, man. I watched playthroughs and shit. I'm like, wow, this is terrible. <laughs> wow. It's even Yo. the same fucking thing. Yo, Chris, I was the same way with Secret of Mana, man. Oh, yeah. How did they fuck that up? Yeah, that, know, that, right? goes into, oh. that goes into disappointment list too, man. Mm. Mm-hmm. Mm. A lot of people think that oh, yeah. uh, Kingdom Hearts is going to suck. Yeah, we'll see about that. Uh, 2019. A lot Something of people. What people wear? Yeah, it, well, I think I had friends. Promotions. No, they were just talking <laughs> about the promotion. That they noticed that they're not pushing it as hard as when it comes to promotion, like they did with Final Fantasy. And he, you would think they would be able the to game ain't out yet, bro. Give it. Give, wait till next year. Yeah, right? they're man, gonna go it's hide. not. It's yeah. not. I mean, here's, well, they're just they just showed the, the the intro movie to the game. They did a bunch of other stuff. I was like, what? Do you, what else can you ask for? And the other thing, not to it's mention, still all in Japanese. No, no. it's not. It's, it's, it's in English. No, it's in English. Yeah, remember they the had a big. Never, had, the games were never. The games were never all in Japanese. They had a. They had a big trailer where they showed all the big like movie stars that are working on this game. You know. Yeah. Yeah, I think you're just not not paying attention to be yeah, honest. It's, it's something. No, no, I, it's not me. I have buddies that are hardcore into it and beat all the other ones, and they're like they're not really excited for this one. Or maybe because they're old online. men now. Yeah, well, I mean, that's come on, it, come on. you looked, were like for for me, I was. I'm talking about years beating old. them now, recently. Like they bought them recently when they came out again on PS4. Yeah, I don't know, but we'll get to that in the 2019 <laughs> segment. Um, anyway, um, Brett, disappointing game, 2018. Um, you know, I've been trying to think of. Some, I, I don't really play a lot of games that I. I'm kind of like Manny in that. Like I, I generally do fair amount of research and play it and uh, or only buy it if I know that I'm going to play it and enjoy it. Um, so with that being said, I only have kind of two half-assed answers in that uh, I only kind of mean them. Uh, the first is Sea of Thieves, not because I was really disappointed with the game. I actually enjoyed the game. Um, it was small, it was simple, it was fun to drop in, had a good time with my friends. Uh, I'm kind of disappointed that it fell off so quick. Um, I mean that the community did it, it kind of stayed strong, but it's, it's, uh, it's difficult and to, to jump into it uh, at this point, it's pretty barren. So I'm a little bit disappointed that it, it didn't have the, the chops to actually stay much of a working game. And that's a kiss of death for online games. Um, other end of the spectrum is I'm really disappointed in red deads online. And that's why I say it's only kind of half an answer because not disappointed with the story fucking at all. Uh, multiplayer though, like uh, maybe I was expecting more than I should have. Um, no, no, I, I've, I've actually thought about this. I don't think I was expecting more than I should have because even if uh, GTA was this bad at launch, I feel like Rockstar should have progressed past that at this point. So, do either of those count? Yeah, they count. They they both are those are, are, are half, so they form one game. So I'm taking it. There <laughs> you you know, um, who didn't go yet? Brian. Yeah, Brian didn't go. All right, I guess everybody went. Um, uh, yeah. I haven't said which you, one, and was you didn't say we'll nothing when I asked. <laughs> uh, I you know, here's the thing: I can't say that I have played any. I've, I've, I've just like Chris, I've managed to avert playing anything that's overly horrible. As much as you don't like Quiet Man, I didn't feel like it was a bad experience for my for myself. I feel like it's one of those situations where it's like, you know, it could have been better. But I mean, to be honest, I didn't spend a lot of money on it, so it was like, all right. You know, it, it kept me interested. It kept me, uh, it kept me interested for the amount of time, and that's all you can really ask for, really. Yeah. Uh oh. Uh, all day says he's gonna block all of us if nobody says Fallout seventy six. 
Uh, the thing well, is, well, I mean, but we can't, yeah, we, we, we can't, we can't, we can't say that because none yeah. of oh, oh, you know, oh, Brett's the only one that's actually playing the game. You know, it'd be yeah, wrong to it, say so, yeah. Yeah. something was the I, worst game ever when you actually haven't played it. Yeah, I, way, I will say that. I just want to say we are not one of those podcasts that shits on games they don't play. We don't do that around here. No, you know. I I will say I'm disappointing. I'm disappointed at the launch of the game and the reception of it and pretty much everything surrounding it. But I can't really say the game is sh- is shit because I haven't played it. Yeah, yeah. Like I'm you disappointed know, in but you know everything Bethesda has done, but the actual game I haven't played it, so I can't say anything. You know. Actually, I, you know, I will. Uh, I will. I will take. Uh, I am disappointed with Bethesda. Uh, over the game is complete and total shit. Uh, most days, I mean, that's that's a really a, a more cohesive argument in my book. So I won't even push back on that. Um, I'm not, again, because my point of view was, again, from a lot of broken-ass survival games, but I can absolutely understand where people looking for a traditional Fallout experience were not finding, uh, you know, online play to be as stable as they thought it was going to be. That's That's a genuine disappointment. I can understand that. Yeah. But yeah, they, all day, you know, can't really say anything about a game we haven't played, bro. <laughs> you know? Um, all right, so let's get to the final segment here. Uh, what are your most anticipated games of 2019? Or anticipated games or anticipated things in gaming 2019? Outer Worlds. Outer Worlds all day long, dude. Is that confirmed 2019? Yeah, dude, yeah. It said yeah. in the trailer, 2019. Yeah. All right, cool. All right, um, explain why. Uh, because it is from the people who made KOTOR 2, it is from the original creators of Fallout, it is essentially them kind of taking back and rebuilding a franchise. It seems to have a lot in common with Fallout. Um, like I said, it's, it's from the original Fallout people. So it, immediately you have my love there, and it's fucking Cowboys on the Moon. How do you not want to play this game? Oh man, Cowboy Bebop the game? Is that what you're telling me? Dude, it feels like Cowboy Bebop. Like the, <laughs> it, it, it is. It it somehow feels like Fallout while not doing the post-apocalyptic thing. So it it's, and I'm I'm ex- I'm really excited. Just even the tone of the trailer seems, you know, uh, uber violent and irreverent. Which I, I like it when games don't take themselves too seriously. So you know everything from, you know, the art style to what the, looks to be the combat to the setting, um, seems really cool to me. That's it's immediately my most anticipated game. Like the second I saw the trailer, I was like, "Yes, I'm sold." Um, anything like in general that you're looking forward to with uh, you know, larger gaming world? Uh, no, I'm generally disappointed in the, uh, the trends of the larger gaming world. Yeah, I can't blame you on that one, dude. All right, um, Adam, what game are you listening, looking forward to the most? I already know the answer, but, you know, go ahead. Uh, <laughs> Division 2. Of course. Division 2. I mean, I, I, I actually calmed down with all the research because I was trolling everywhere for new news and stuff, and then you're going out with some other people, and that's like, that's great, but I sort of don't want to know now. I stopped. I stopped looking because I'm looking at I want some surprises. I want to go into this with some surprises. You know, I don't. I don't like that. Even if there's a, a the beta that's going to be, I don't know. I, I'll probably still play it. But it's just something about going into something fresh. You know that feeling. That's why I did with Red Dead. I avoided all talks of story. I didn't know about Arthur. Not. I didn't want to know. I wanted to be surprised. So for me, that's that's the, my most anticipated. And hopefully, it doesn't suck. That's that's my biggest fear because I think I was really thinking about this. I think about the, the division at least 18, 20 times a day. And when I was thinking about it, I'm like, I think my connection or my love for it, at least the original one, is New York. I know the city. I know the streets. I had this connection. And when I was running down those streets, I walked down those streets. So it it felt very familiar to me. And I think that was my connection with it, a, a second connection to it. You know, especially, you know, I put on Spotify and then I'll have a playlist and that's a playlist that I would play when I would just walk around. So I'm like doing the same thing. It was great. And I don't know if I'm going to have that type of connection with Division 2. At least I definitely know not for the environment, but I hope that's not what's just really luring me into this game. And and I will enjoy the, the second one if they do some of the tweaks and stuff that, that it needs. But yeah, for me, it's Division 2. What about anything in gaming that you're looking forward to? In gaming? Yeah, like it could like be like a trend. Innovation. Or it, yeah, no, 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 no. Uh, it's like a trend, hardware, whatever, you know? Yeah, uh, this Xbox service 
is what I'm looking for. This Xbox, uh, it's not anywhere. They're calling it something else. He brought it up at E3. Basically, the idea that you can play, sort of like how PlayStation Now works. Well, how you, where, it's, where you can do it on TV and all that stuff, but with their new back-end server, the Azure talking about that it's going to be awesome, no lag, no latency, blah, blah, blah. You know, and then the fact that they worked out some agreement with Apple to, to actually support the, the Xbox controller, which is a big deal because um, almost nothing works when it comes to Bluetooth controllers on any Apple products. And you know, some games support certain things, but generally, like those A-B those, they work on everything under the sun except Battle, Apple uh, iPad and iPhone. So I'm, I'm really curious to see how that works out and how far that deal goes with some of their other partnerships because they say they're really good friends with uh, uh, Nintendo and Nintendo's all about pushing the Switch. So I, that would be amazing if they say, hey, by the way, that app that it's also going to be on the Switch. Go buy a damn Switch. Now you have all your Nintendo games and you'll have your Xbox account on the go. Do it. And I could see that as being a great partnership for both of them. So we'll see. Hmm. But that service is supposed to be announced. I don't know if it's going to launch, but I know more details in the summer of 2019. So we'll see. All right, Carlos, go. Um... Crackdown 3. <laughs> the hottest uh, game of all times. The butter game. The butter game. Um, Oh, man. I, You're saying I don't know anthem, if this is cheating, but I was going to say The Last of Us. T- <laughs> anthem, man. But definitely, definitely Anthem. Nah, the Last of Us 2, I guess. But it doesn't have, does it have a release date? I don't think <clears> so. <throat> no, not really. No release date. What about uh, that other one that's like The Last of Us? That's coming out. That definitely uh, Days, Days Gone. Days Gone? Oh no, hell no! I ain't looking. No, no you're not hype on that. Nah, it's not the butter game. You know what I was wondering? What if they put co-op? Why on? is it? Why right? is it? Well, would, that, would that be? That'd be kind of cool if we all jumped in that world. A four-player co-op, maybe. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right, but then if you do that, you just may as well just play Dying Light too. You know. Like, if I have to pick one zombie game, I'd rather pick that, to be honest. That was tricky. I didn't like some of their spawning, and I didn't like all my equipment breaking down. <laughs> Ghost of Tsushima! Oh, there what you, you call me? Yeah. Ghost of Tsushima! <laughs> Ghost of Tsushima, you see you too, buddy! Shit. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, Ghost of Tsushima 2019. Yeah, that's the game I'm looking forward to. Man, well, the fucking we, trailer, man. That. Did you see that trailer? That shit was crazy. Excuse we me? Saw that. I don't know. We, I think we need to see more on that, though. That was just... I've seen enough. I don't want to see more. I just want to play that game, man. I'm hype. I'm in, I'm in, I'm, I'm in the front of the bandwagon, man. I'm leading the charge. Ghost of Tsushima, man. That shit's fucking crazy. That shit's hot fire, man. That shit on my TV. You know what I mean? Oh, that's a, that's a, what do they call it? That's that's the butter game. The butter game. <laughs> I mean, um, I, I definitely want to see it, but I haven't, I haven't made any sort of decision as to what if if if, if it's you know if I'm gonna like it or not. Well, yeah, you do that when you play the game. Exactly. <laughs> um, what's it called? The news, uh, I'm way, uh, okay, so th- the news that I'm looking forward to is one of either Microsoft or Sony is going to announce a console in 2019, and I, I think I think it's going to be Microsoft. I think they'll announce the console later in 2019 um, to get the hype, ban- the, to get the hype uh, bandwagon going started because they, I mean, it was kind of successful when they did it for the Xbox One X. They announced that shit like one or two years before it even came out. When it was like Project Scorpio, and um, yeah, I think they'll 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 follow a similar trend and and announce it uh, the previous year and and get it started, man. Get the next gen up and bubbling. Yeah, that's it for me. Oh. Oh wait, wait! One little yeah. piece. Of, oh, uh, and one more thing. thing. Oh, 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 Tony, Tony, Tony. Hold up, Supposed also that's supposed to come out for Microsoft in uh, the summer. This uh, Xbox One S without uh, a drive. This mini version. You really looking forward to that shit, man? I want. I'm just curious to see how small it's going to be because they're talking about it's going to be really small and that this is going to be a pure digital box. It'll be interesting because that'll be the first yeah. in the console market to ever do. Oh, it won't be smaller than the PS1 Classic, I'll tell you that much. How funny yeah. would that be if it's even close? <laughs> it would be pretty funny. Yeah. 
All right. Did um, you just beep? We all just beep. Yeah, I heard that. Beep, 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 beep. But that, right. that's, um, that was me. I got a text from somebody. Yeah, that me, was me too. That was me. That was oh, me. it's you, Tony. You spamming. What are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> all right, um, Chris. Uh, the main game I'm looking forward to next year is Resident Evil 2 Remake. Man. Excuse me? Oh, yeah. You know I? That, <laughs> that, that's hot fire right there. I can't wait for that shit to come out. I'm I'm so hyped for that shit. I'm just like dreaming about it. I'm shooting zombies really? and I wake up like, oh fuck. Oh. Yeah, and then um, but my runner-up game though is uh is uh Shadows Die Twice, man. I need that. I need that hit of Dark Souls. You oh, need Samurai Souls. Samurai Souls. That's a good one. Yeah, yeah. Samurai Souls. There, yeah, man. Can't wait. All right. Uh, what about like uh, you know general gaming stuff you're looking forward to next year? Hardware uh, uh, innovations, whatever you know. Oh, uh, you know, innovation. I don't know if anybody's innovating. Um, I agree with Carlos. Microsoft probably announced whatever the Scarlet's going to be next year. I um, I'll, I'll look forward to talking about them them sales numbers of Anthem. Oh, uh, shit. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Did anybody play it when it was? Uh, I'll pour one out for for fucking. Bioware at New oh, Year's. Man. <laughs> <sighs> I hope it doesn't happen, but man, I don't feel good about that shit. I hope I hope it's a good game. You're like, but... you're like, I don't feel so good. I don't feel so good, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Tony, totally, I don't feel so good about you're this right. game. Tony, totally, I don't feel so good. <laughs> Mr. Polanco, I don't feel so good. Yeah, thank, I mean, I, this this good game stuff coming out next year, but, but like in terms of like. Like that, that I'm telling you, they put so many eggs in that basket that if if drop if they drop it, it by where's it done, man. So to. that's yeah, it has to succeed. If it doesn't succeed, man, it's they're fucked. So I, I mean, scary. I said that earlier in the show, but so the yeah, but I mean, in terms of titles, yeah, I mean, the, I look for uh, Resident, like I said, Resident Evil Two, Shadows Die Twice. There's other, there's other good stuff coming. Ghost of Tsushima, that that looks good. So there's good stuff coming out. I don't know if Sony's gonna see. Sony's been pretty tight-lipped. Like they canceled PSX. They're 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 out of E3 next year. So they're gonna remain tight until they're ready to talk about something. I have, I I don't know if they're gonna wait till the end of the year to say, oh, something. PS5. Gotta have you know, something. I don't know. <laughs> oh man. Um. All right, I'll um I'll go next. Uh, I'm gonna jump on board with you, Chris. Uh, Resident Evil Two Remake. Are you fucking kidding me right now? Like, I don't you care. About, I, don't, I don't. I don't care about any of these new games coming out here. That's the shit I want to play. And I'm go. I'm gonna actually go even more ham. And this just got announced on Monday. I am so fucking hype for the Panzer Dragoon remakes. Oh my! Are you kidding me right now? I've been waiting two decades for this shit. You know. So hopefully it won't be a secret of mana situation though. You know. Yeah, um, but, but yeah, but Resident Evil or Two Remake I already played two demos of it. Fucking brilliant! I cannot wait. That's gonna be good. Um, and as for like gaming stuff, um, I kind of want to see more of a follow up on this whole um, you know, government uh, crackdown on the like. I hope it's not as bad as I'm fearing it's gonna be. You know, so hopefully the the loot box stuff will calm down and you know get the government off our back. You know, can't have that. And if, with hardware, I, I still don't know if I want to see new hardware. Maybe maybe if you want to announce it, but, like, from Sony specifically, I don't want to hear shit. Like, d don't say nothing. Wait till 2020, man. If Microsoft, you know, says something, whatever, it doesn't matter, you know. The, it's the Sony thing I, I'm really looking forward to, but I don't want to hear it next year, you know. <laughs> Yo, man, I, I don't want to hear that shit. I can see them announcing something with their VR, because aren't they close to announcing something about a new model? Um, I don't know. I, I mean, they already had released a new model recently. Well, that was just a tweak model, but I mean, new like a wireless one. Oh, they haven't said anything about that. The only um correct it was um Oculus that has a wireless one. Yeah, they Sony, have a Sony has one. nothing on that yet, so we don't want to jump the gun there. Um, Manny. Uh, I mean, to? I am. You know, I'm looking forward to Kingdom Hearts. Uh, you know, I played the series before, so it's uh, it's oh. gonna it's it's all oh, that. Just linked to what? Because I was like, man, I I looked up and it was a uh, your boy, uh, the which called Tim Gettys, and I'm said he played it, and it looks like a PS3 game. That's where I was wondering. I was like, damn, I remember some outlet was trashing it already, and he was like, it's a pass. That was it. 
No, I mean the game looks good so far. I mean, I don't, and I don't you know who cares about Tim Geddes. I don't care. I'm just saying. That <laughs> I knew it was somewhere that I heard it. That wasn't just people that I know. I knew it was some outlet that had talked some shit. No, I mean so far, so far the gameplay they've been showing looks good. It looks, you know, really nice. You know, it looks like the shows and animation that you know the the animated things that they're supposed to. And you know, I'm looking forward to, to finally ending the game after uh, you know. I, I mean, the last Kingdom Hearts game, you know, you know, at least officially numbered one. I was 22 years old when that for that night game came out. I'm 38 right now. It's insane. Shit, you're so, older than me. So it's 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 <laughs> it's, it's been a long time coming. So coming. So it's gonna be nice to have finally put that stuff, put that that series to an end, or you know, put the little bow at the end of it and find out what the hell is it going? What the hell is going on? Anyway, that uh, I, I'd like. Uh, uh, Ghost of Tsushima is also another one that I want to play. Another open world game. I'm not too keen. At least it looks like an open world game. I'm not too keen on those sorts of things. I, open world games is just like everybody's got to have a big old open world game. Uh, but uh, you know, I'm interested in it. And um, a Shadows Die Twice. I'm I'm looking into that one. I you know, it's supposed to be like the bastard child of 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 Tenchu and uh, and 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 uh, you know uh, Dark Souls. So. You know, or you know, I'd uh, like to see where that goes. Um, let's see what else is there. Um, what about what like the... any like big announcements from like you know in gaming? Anything uh, announcements? I I really don't really care that much about announcements. I I really don't even like to speculate on them. I just like let it come when it it comes, <laughs> you know, sort of thing. You know, like I'm not I'm like I'm not like waiting, you know, with bated breath, like, hey, uh, I got, uh, you know, for the the PlayStation Five announcement or the Xbox Seven Twenty announcement. You know, uh, <laughs> actually, you know, wouldn't it be One Eighty? Oh, <laughs> it would shit. be at One Eighty. <laughs> yeah, right. But yeah, I am not not really looking. You know, it's, I'm not like I'm not at the chomping at the bit of that sort of information. You know, it. So far, I mean, in general, you know me, I don't get overly excited for for things so you know i'm like it's usually kind of even kill it's got to be something really really special for me to really go oh shit, blah, blah, you know um uh it's yeah so you know hopefully you know they continue to you know to do to do things and hopefully there's nothing they won't start f- more companies that are beloved companies don't start fucking up <laughs> next year you know <laughs> all of a sudden you know yeah. Wait, who, who's the who's the uh, who's the uh, developer, the last developer darling left that uh, that can do no wrong? Ubisoft. What are you talking no. about? They always no. get shitted on, you know. They always they get put, no, but what do you mean? But they always fix up their shit. They don't just leave everything broken. No, but he's they talking about like a crap. developer that's never been. No, really one that one that can one developer. I mean, to be honest, if Bethesda was the darling that could never do any wrong. And same I, thing. I, with I got Blizzard. one for you. Rockstar. Man, Nintendo. Rockstar was up there too. They could do nothing wrong. Many Nintendo is there's one for you. Uh, yeah, the, Nintendo kind of is impervious. Yeah, like it. You know, they could be friggin' like you know raping you right in front of everybody, and everybody's still like, yes, Nintendo! <laughs> you know? <laughs> <laughs> All the diehards would be like, oh my god, you know, freaking, um, what's his face, um, you know, uh, Triforce Tri- Johnson, <laughs> he'll be, he'll be oh fainting and seeing this shit, be like, man, I want that too. You can fuck me as well. <laughs> that's hey, how, hey, that's hey, how hey, <laughs> Hang out every word Reggie says. Even every word that Reggie wild. says, you know, fucking, fucking Miyamoto could punch somebody in the face, and they'd still be like, "Yes, finally, someone Miyamoto punched somebody in the face. Let me get one of those." That's how <laughs> no wrong they can do. Oh, yeah. <laughs> in the eyes of me. Yeah. So yeah, Nintendo would, is the last one, then, man. Yeah, they're the last one. They, they got to do something really mor- 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 remote. <laughs> To uh to really get people to get everybody mad. <laughs> so hilarious. All right, um, let me read some of the the answers here. So I asked people in the chat what were they most anticipating. Uh, let's see here. Uh, all day says Mortal Kombat 11s. Ta-ta-ta. Um, Kristen says Man of Medan. Chris, you're looking forward to that one too, I think. Yeah, that's the guys who made Until Dawn. It yeah. looks good. Oh that's yeah, the, that's the one. I on thought the that ship, was just right? a VR one. No, no. The inpatient was their VR game. Uh, that, that bonk, that bonk. Oh, yeah. This is the boat, the boat, the haunted boat. And this is the yeah. multi-platform one. It's not only going to be on Xbox. But it's also going. I mean, not only on PlayStation, it's going to be on Xbox as well. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, World War Z. I didn't even know that was getting a video game. 
Yeah, I didn't know either. World War Z? What? I, mean, I saw, you know what? I did. We did see it in a sizzle. We did see it. Yeah. Um, oh, it looks like it's based like, on the movie. And it's the based worst. on the movie, so they're all running on top of each other. You know. Uh, you mean based it on the comic. All right. Um, I think that's going to do it for us, actually. Uh, very interesting. So, yeah, this is the last main episode of Throwing Out for 2000. Uh, 18 but we're not done yet people we still got one more episode and that's where we're going to do our big thank yous and goodbyes and all that other stuff you know so that is going to be throw down your questions episode 214 usual day and time sunday 10 30 p.m eastern and this one is going to be the ama special so oh, go over to our youtube right now if you can't make it live uh go to the latest episode which is 213 and leave us questions two questions you could either be both about gaming both about pop culture or w anything random or whatever you want just mix it up uh it'll be cool amas are always kind of fun so it'll be good to uh do some of that and then obviously we're going to take some questions live and all that stuff you know but as for throwdown itself 214 episodes one more episode for the year so that'll be another 100 episodes uh, total like we usually do man it's crazy man i'm not done with you yet <laughs> Yeah. All right, man. So, yeah, we're not done yet. So, yeah, we'll say our, you know, thank yous and all that other stuff on Sunday, people. All right. And it's so, not by, goodbye forever. Just no, by the not, way, yeah, exactly. Back every back year back. we have to, every year we have to do that. Yo, so not, it's not ending. <laughs> it's my favorite podcast. Why y'all leaving? <laughs> no, we're not ending. It's just, it's just for this year, we're saying our farewells. But here's the thing, you know, for, you know, we're going to be going on a, uh, you know, a little hiatus, but that doesn't mean that you're not going to be seeing us at some point. We still got games and things that we're going to be playing live. I'm probably going to see if I can fit a one last throwdown draws into that, into that time. So, yeah. Yeah, and GTA got a new thing, Adam. So you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah man, gotta yeah, rock that GTA. Arena War. Yeah, yeah, Arena War. That's gonna be fun. Definitely want to play that. Cool. All right, man. So let's do this. Uh, so thank you for watching and listening. Subscribe, to throw down on SoundCloud, iTunes, and YouTube. Follow us on Twitch, Twitter, and Facebook at Throwdown Show. Links are located in the description below. Once again, I was your host Tony Polanco. Tonight, I'm joined by Emilio Lopez. I'll see you later, guys. Chris Seeley. Hey, take care, everyone. Carlos Romero. Hasta la vista. Brett Murdoch. It's been real, everybody. And Adam Vale. Have a good one. All right, guys. We'll see you on Sunday, man. Later. Later, guys. Deuces. Peace. Later, people. Later, people. <laughs>